but yeah, as far as keeping up with the stumps, you're spending a lot of your hours up to the stumps, uh, in India. Although 2004, I, I probably didn't do as much as what traditional teams do over there because we chose a different line of attack. Uh, Hodgie, our batting lineup, especially as we head to the India one through six, yeah. happy with it. Where are the, the little areas from for improvement? I think just record away from home. Um, one of the toughest things we know is to win away from these shores and it's awfully difficult for countries that come to Australia and win. So they're the biggest challenges. I think everything's in good working order, you know, um, one of the things which will be challenge, I think will who, if we actually operate with two spinners or maybe we just go in with Nathan Lyon and trust him to get the job done. That's probably one question that they'll have to answer. Uh, I think the batting's actually in good working order. Um, like to see Davy on the back of his 200 go and get some runs over there. Usman Kawaja has actually had some really good tours you know, outside of Australia. Um, UAE mm. play well, Pakistan, I think he played well from memory. So there's some good signs there. Travis Head will also come in with a completely different mindset. So I think it's quite exciting. Um, but it's down to how much you can just grind it over there. Mm. It's, it's a long, hard days and tough cricket. So not only just the, the on-field stuff, it's the off-field stuff where, you know, the air conditioner breaks down halfway through the night and it's 39 degrees and you can't get a good night's sleep and the challenge of the food. And it's just, it's just a tough place to play. What, what, and, and when you win, as you know, Gilly, mm. it's just a remarkable achievement. What, um, <laughs> it sounds like a few stories stand out in your mind there, Hodgie, about your time in India. <laughs> oh, a number of times. We've all had our time licking the porcelain late at night, haven't we? So, <laughs> it's, it's that, I mean, what have we been there? Probably oh. over 20 years, probably mm. th probably 40 times, maybe yep. more. Um, and there's times where you get sick. And as we all know, there's stories of Rodney Hogg running off the field and all sorts of times when players struggle on, on field. And... Also, when you get sick, it drains your energy. So yeah. it does take you a couple of days mm. to get over that. But they're the challenges around playing overseas. Um, mm. Not only just in India, but all sorts of venues. But in terms of the squad, uh, I think it's a really good squad. Um, there's there's an issue a little bit around Mitchell Swepson. I, I don't think his form has been fantastic at all. Um, so they need to look at that. Uh, well, Todd Murphy looks like yep. he's the, you know... Everyone seems to be talking about how good this guy is. Yeah. It's almost to the point of how hasn't he played test cricket, the way everyone seems to be talking in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, he's got the skills and he's brilliant. And and I guess there's no reason why you can't play two off spinners. If, if they're the best the country's got. Mm. And we just imagine you had two Nathan Lyons. Why wouldn't you play two Nathan yeah. Lyons? So it's the same theory, but everyone likes variety. But if they're the best mm. and Todd Murphy's going to bowl 30 overs and get five for a hundred and pick him. Uh, Gilly, 2004, can we, can we get back in the time machine and, and go back to there <laughs> for a second? Um, just revisiting that series, it, it, it does get a little lost about, and we asked the question at last week on Willow Talk, it was a little quiz question. Who was the captain for our 2004 India series? How many knew? I, I did because we did it the oh, week yeah. before, but yeah. the, the, <laughs> the guess we had, oh, and went through the list. I think it was with Ferg, went through the list. Hey, Gilchrist, captain. But then uh, Ponting comes back into the fourth set uh, one, test. One test. Take us through that. Like, cause you, you won the series. Kind of can't claim that. Can and then he got his job series. back. Did you do the trophy lift after the fourth test or did you do it after the third when you've actually fourth. wrapped it up? Fourth. And it was. <laughs> so Ricky got the trophy in his hand and <laughs> yeah. lifted it up. Did he? I think we both did it together, but okay. uh, it was such a fun as well. It was very appropriate. Ricky was, uh, he joined us mid tour. He broke his thumb, yeah, mm. in two thousand and four in the Champions Trophy in uh, in England. Yeah, I, we were playing England in the semi final of that about September, August, September or something, I think. Um, of uh, at Edgbaston, ball came through, clipped. He put a catch down, wreck time that he put a catch down. Mm. But not only did that, left the field. He just didn't go off the field, did he? No. He just grin and bear it, yeah. and he went off, and I knew straight away. Oh shit. <laughs> he's broken his finger yeah. and I immediately thought I'm going to have to captain in India. <laughs> and I started absolutely shitting bricks <laughs> because three years earlier, 
Oh, I had my own demons that I had to get over. I went there and scored one of the best hundreds ever. I thought, what have these blokes been doing in India for 31 years, these Aussies? And then got a king pair in the next test <laughs> and one and one in the next test. So yeah. I faced about eight more balls on that tour after getting 100. I was shot. That was the Laxman series. Yeah. So I was petrified about – and I, I, I'd resign myself. I'm not going to do it. Mm. And they hadn't even offered it to me at that point. <laughs> but I, I was panicking. But um, – who else was going to do it, though, if you didn't Well, do I don't know. I just assumed I was because I was vice-captain, but they could well have gone elsewhere because they might have thought wicket-keeping was too much to yeah. captain and to bat and all that. But uh, anyway, I I took it on it and ended up being uh, the highlight of my cricketing career, really, I think, for us to yeah. achieve that success over there. Mm. Uh, but it was appropriate that Punter was there, albeit in a non-playing role in Nagpur, where we actually secured the trophy. Yep. And then for him to be there, albeit albeit that we lost the last test, that was on the worst career pitch that I ever played on in international career. Was it chasing 107 for victory, bowled out for 93? Yeah, it was two days. History will say it's three days, but the first day was washed out, (laughs) save for about four overs. So it was a two-day test. Um, And But Ricky was such hmm. an important part. I mean, our fact-finding mission started in 2001 under Tugger's leadership where we were oh so close and all of a sudden – we had the rug pulled out from under us and India outplayed us in the end. Uh, 2004 in Sri Lanka, uh, Ricky's first tour as captain. Um, that's where we garnered a lot of information and detail about how to play those conditions. And then we took all those learnings into 2004 with a complete change of mindset to what we Australian teams had traditionally done going over there in saying, right, we have to find some spin bowlers and play them because that's what you do in India. Mm. Whereas we went the other way. We said, we're going to pick our four best bowlers, whether they're fast or spin, and we're going to um, adjust our tactics to suit those bowling styles in those conditions. How hard was it for you to have all that on your plate? Uh, Bowling changes, field placings, tactically really strong. Very experienced team. So guys know how to go about it. We Mm. all knew it was that change in tactics wasn't my directive. That was our collective sort of um, philosophy over the course of a, a year or so of starting to think about it and plan ahead for it. Mm. So Ricky was, his fingerprints were all over it. John Buchanan, um, all of us, we had to buy in. I mean, Warney had to buy into basically being a holding bowler, you know, a hold one end up for us, mate, just plug him in and probably not expecting you to get Pfeiffer which we always expected Warney to do everywhere, let alone in India, um, and just allow us to rotate the quicks at the other end, start with really defensive fields from the start mm. to be offensive, to to attack the stumps, catching midway. It's one slip. We started the first test with one slip, yeah. first time we bowled, and it was a bit of a shock to them. So that was everyone uh, buying into it. So we knew a plan, and, and it wasn't like a master stroke for me to, change that bowler or create that fielding position, we were well drilled and well prepared for it. And the guys, the bowlers executed beautifully. Now, Hodgie mentioned before about seeing um, a bit of porcelain over in India. <laughs> uh, the morning after you wrapped up the series or celebrated the series, was there some self-inflicted porcelain action or was it, uh, <laughs> how, how good was the celebration? Can't say the Pride Hotel in Nagpur is a rocking joint, <laughs> I must say. The lack of. <laughs> the uh, lack of pride, it's called, isn't it? <laughs> the Pride Hotel in Nagpur. We had history going back a long way. <laughs> Uh, but it, it's, um, it's basically at the end of the runway of the airport, this hotel. <laughs> awesome. Just what you want. It's not great. <laughs> it's not a, it's not a big taxi from airport to hotel no, either. No. <laughs> you can almost get your port and walk off and drag it across the tarmac. But, uh, very good. It was quite subdued considering some celebrations of test matches or world cup wins that we've been very fortunate to have dodgeball, but, um, I it was pretty one... subdued, but I think more reflective, well done on the achievement. 